Hey, it's Coach T. This is uh, another video in my Affinity Publisher 2 series. I like Affinity Publisher because it's a one-time purchase and it's often on sale. And it's competitive with something like Adobe Photoshop, Adobe InDesign. Um, it's better than Microsoft Publisher in almost every respect. And if you're trying to design something like a magazine or a brochure or a catalog, you really can't go wrong with this software. However, there are many bells and whistles. There are a lot of tools at your behest. It is a mile wide and a mile deep, so to speak. So what I'm trying to do with this video series is just provide a number of elementary, uh, beginner-oriented tutorials to help people like myself, adult learners, get started making something cool. I've got several hundred hours of experience working with Affinity because I contributed to some skirmish games and some board games that I helped design. And I did most of that work once I once I realized this program was there. I did most of that work in Affinity Publisher 2. And I've been using it for about two and a half years now. So each of these tutorials is really designed to go down into one function, one feature, show you how to use one tool, hopefully expand it enough and expand your knowledge enough that you can then carry it forth and go do cool stuff on your own. And if you run into a question, feel free to drop a comment. If you've got a tip, feel free to drop that in the comment. And if you like the head first approach, subscribe to the channel. What we're looking at today in this particular video is the text styles over here. Now in the last video, we have been looking at FX, which we access through the layers panel. But I had said I've skipped this right hand bar for now because there's just a lot going on in these context sensitive menus and I didn't want people getting a little bit overwhelmed with just the number of toys over here. So we're going really deliberately step by step through this. What we're going to focus on today is the text styles and all the different things you can do with it. Unfortunately, Affinity comes packed with way too many text styles and it can be visually overwhelming. What we're going to do is we're just going to look at just a few. So what, I, what I'm going to do, I know this is an empty document. Um, I have just some body text. I'm going to show you how to delete these, get them out of the way if you're not using them. So we want to just left click to highlight it. We can highlight all of them, honestly, I think. Oh, oh maybe it's going to fight me. It's going to fight me. Okay, never mind. We'll do it one by one. Right click, delete, just get them out of the way. Keep bullet one for now. Get rid of that drop cap. Keep bullet one, keep heading one and two. Initial words, we'll get rid of that. Line above, we'll get rid of that. Line below, we'll get rid of that. We don't need this stuff. Line to the left, we don't need that. These are all things that, I mean, they don't really matter if you get rid of them. I just don't like them in my face. One of the first things I do, if I'm not working from a template, which I will cover how to build a template in another video, um, I get rid of all of that right away when I'm importing a document because I just don't like the analysis paralysis. So right now we have no actual text on this particular page other than news and then the stuff in the background that's my, my header and my footer uh, page numbers. What I want to do is I want to I want to show you how to edit this heading which is heading one you can see it up here heading one plus the plus up here indicates that I've made changes to this particular um, text style that have not been saved. And I can fix that by right clicking and just saying, I'm going to update that one right here, this update heading one. And now you can see the plus one away. That's how I know that everything that I do is going to have that particular type of, of heading. So we want to, we want to experiment. You learn software, you learn design by experimenting. So what happens if I click bullet one? Well, it's going to apply the bullet one to that. And that's not necessarily what I wanted, but now I have, it's hard to see from that angle, I have a bullet point. I don't want a bullet point, I want a heading. And I know when I'm designing my book that all of my headings are gonna be 60, uh, 60 point font. So it's nice and big on the page, right? Catches the reader's eye, but I don't wanna have to manually do that every single time. Well, I should be able to just update heading one. I don't know what happened up here. You should be, you should be body text. Why aren't you body text? You're no style. Oh, okay. Here's another thing to, thing to take a look at. These are character styles. They tell you like, should it be bold, hyperlinked, emphasis? This one here is your paragraph style. Right now it says no style. 
make that body, right? And we can see that body is not doing what we want it to do. So we need to address that. Let's take body and we're going to create a new style called header uh, or we'll, we'll call it page header. So there's no confusing with body headers. So right click on body and we're going to create a style based on body. We're going to rename this page header. No space. And then we have all these options that we can use. And once we set one of these options, we can then reuse that text style anytime we want a similar looking font. So let's go to font, font family, no change. Let's call it Arial rounded just to distinguish it a little bit. Font style, regular, right? We're not going to touch any of that. Font size, here's where I can set my font size. Let's say I always want that to be 14. It'll always be 14 now. Color and decorations, if I always want it to be filled white to make sure, I can do that. Do I want to underline? You know what? Yeah, let's do an underline. No, stri no strike through, no outline, nothing like that. Position and transform. Well, this is stuff that you might want to start to learn about. It's beyond the, 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 uh, the scope of the video to talk about kerning and tracking. Um, let's see, paragraph, spacing, tabs, justification, minimum, desired. So this allows me to figure out exactly how far to justify, flow, hyphenation, drop caps, initial words right a lot of options and the best way to learn these is to just practice with them so let's see I want this to be my page header style and I'm going to center it and then notice that it's not if I click back on it, it it's it's messy make sure you right click and update if you like the way that that looks now let's apply this to our redheaded stepchild fire tower news we click on that guy, get him selected. Notice he has no style, body but no style. So we're going to go to page header and boom, there he goes. And also of note, the FX that were applied to Fire Tower News is uh, still there. It doesn't, it doesn't strip it off when we change the text style because that's a layer feature. So no FX on your stories, FX on Fire Tower News because the FX are applied at the layer level, not the text style layer. layer level next so there you go we've got a little bit there about how we can build different body uh, text styles in order to help you create lots of cool looking stuff so let's go I'm still editing at the uh, at the the master page level let's go back to my body notice that of course as always anything I do to the master page is pushed forward and I want to go from here click select body and start typing and that looks okay right now, but maybe I want that to be a little bit bigger. I can change the font size right here, but if I change it here and I don't change it within the body style by editing body, then it will only affect just this one part. And that's okay. Sometimes you only want words that are big in one area or small in one area. Just like in Microsoft Word, you can edit the individual text over here. But if you know exactly what you want it to look like, use a text style, make a text style, save it, um, there are ways to export it or import them from other files if you have one that you've set up. And that's also where templating is really, really, really useful, is if you export a template, which we will cover in another video, then you don't have to remake these in every single document. You can set up your swatches up here to have just the type of palettes that you want, or and you can set up your, your text styles and you can even import and export master pages. So if you're doing something like a regular magazine or brochure, these textiles will save you a ton of time, just like master pages can save you a ton of time on text layout. So I think that's it. Um, I don't think it's worth going into greater detail. Um, it's better if you sit and play an experiment with the program and create textiles that work for you. So that's what I'm gonna charge you with. I'm gonna cut it off here before the 10 minute mark. If you like this kind of very focused dive into one particular feature of software or of coding, consider subscribing to the channel. And otherwise, hopefully you learned something, got something out of it. I will talk to you later.